All right, so we'll wait until about 2.05 uh, before we start. Uh, just like to remind everyone to make sure your uh, mics are on mute um, and you are fully engaged with our presentations today. Yes, Casey. I just wanted to. I just wanted to ask, how, how are you so pretty, Manny? <laughs> <laughs> I, I clean up for very special occasions such as this. <laughs> oh, thank you for the opportunity to say that because I needed to laugh. Uh, greetings, I said. Good to be here with y'all. I'll go back to mute. Right. Thanks, Casey. All right, folks, we're just gonna allow a couple more minutes uh, to allow our uh, attendees to, to file in um, before the, we get started with our presentation. Um, as a reminder, uh, I'd like to ask everyone at this time to please mute yourself to eliminate any background noise for, during the presentation. Um, if you're on a phone, please press star six. If you're on a computer, go to the bottom of the Zoom screen where you'll see a microphone, press that to mute and, to mute and unmute yourself should you, uh, during the Q and A. Um, we I kindly ask that everyone please mute themselves now. Um, and going forward, uh, we'll, we will be having um, a Q and A during, the, during this presentation. So I encourage you to put your questions for the panelists in the chat uh, box during, the, during their speech. I wish I had some uh, elevator music to go along with this while we're waiting. All right, a couple more minutes. Um, we'll be starting at 3.05 Eastern, 2.05 Central time. Um, as a reminder, we ask you so, we ask, we kindly ask that everyone please mute, their sound, mute themselves to eliminate any background noise. If you're on a phone, press star six. If you're on a computer, go to the bottom of your Zoom screen and click on the microphone to mute yourself. Um, during the presentation, there will be opportunity to uh, ask questions of the presenters. So please put your questions in the chat and we'll get to them in the order that we are receiving them. Um, hope you enjoy our presentation today.
All right, so let's get started here. Uh, let me share my screen with everyone. All right, um, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'd like to thank you for taking your time out of this busy week. I know many of you are Zoomed out at this point in time. Um, and thank you for attending our webinar on the Merlon Eco Park. Um, I'd like to thank you once again for, for attending. I know I understand during this time of COVID, there are a lot of stressors that we have during our daily lives. Um, and that may you know, pull us in many different directions. So I appreciate you sharing your time uh, over the, for the next two hours to uh, view the work that some of these students have done uh, very impressively over the last couple of months. Um, as we go through the presentation, I'll have some opening remarks. Uh, Professor Kathy Bogowski will highlight the, the goals of our project and so, followed by the presentations of our four students on their design schematics of the Myrtle Lawn Eco Park, which is located at the corner of Plank and Myrtle Lawn uh, Avenues in, in North Baton Rouge, Louisiana. So I wanted to take this time once again to please make sure you're muted um, and you are aware of that we'll be having the opportunity to ask questions. So if you have any questions, please put them in the Q and A uh, function. So I wanted to give you a brief overview of how we got to this date. Um, and you know, as part of the, uh, the work of Bill Baton Rouge, this idea of, you know, started with the vision of how can we equitably develop North Baton Rouge, especially the Plank Road Corridor, um, kicked off with you know, a series of community engagement events in uh, February through you know, July of 2019, um, starting you know, to initiate the, the research for the Imagine Plank Road Plan with some of the participants who have been on this call already, so including you know, Ascar Robinson, uh, Emergent Method, HNTB, um, and other uh, local regional stakeholders. Um, in August of 2019, you know, through all our community engagement efforts between Coast City and BBR with uh, the North Baton Rouge community, uh, we were able to uh, include a group of key community uh, residents to be to drive this process. Um, and they identified what they would like to see as part of uh, an eco park or a you know, green space within their neighborhood. Um, and they we found out that we felt that to drive this project and to have it be successful, the community was the ones who had to drive it and be the people who are, you know, whose visions are heard and seen and implemented throughout the process. So our first meeting with them was in August, and then we brought in additional uh, stakeholders uh, within the region, including LSU, who's been a great uh, partner through the last two years. Um, October 19, 2019 was the first time we all met and also the, the first class of, of part of LSU's landscape, School of Landscape Architecture did their you know, community surveying, which meant they went into the community, started to gather the information of what the residents would like to see in, in a public green space that's accessible um, in, within their community. Uh, November 2019 uh, was the kickoff of the Imagine Plank Road Master Plan, uh, in which the community eco park was one of those, uh, you know, projects, and hopefully we'll be the f one of the first to be implemented over the coming months. Um, we had we held a design charrette in, uh, during the MLK Fest in Baton Rouge in 2020, where we got further community impact, followed by, you know, another round of community surveying in January. Sadly. Um, COVID-19 hit, which kind of delayed our reflection period in April 2020, in April 2020 where we go and reflected what we heard and have this open, uh, open meeting of uh, town hall for those residents to actually contribute more information. We delayed that and we actually had it virtually in June 2020, in which we incorporated all the design amenities um, that the community wanted to see. But we still didn't have, we kind of wanted to round out the vision of the actual design of the site. And this is where uh, Professor Bogowski's class comes into play. Um, we the, uh, engaged them at the beginning of uh, this fall semester in September 2020 um, to actually start coming up with a design that was not only inclusive of all the community input, but also took into account our budgetary and other restrictions for uh, the site. And now we have our webinar today. I'd like to extend a special thank you to our project partners. You know, 
uh, for those of you who participated either you know giving money or sharing your time and your other intellectual resources um, it has been a great pleasure to work with you up today up till today and we look forward to working with you over the coming months to actually uh, implement and construct our park um, but once once again i have to say Without you, the Plank Road community, we would not have been, we would not have achieved what we have. Uh, we I'll just make sure that we thank the community ambassadors of Bill Baton Rouge who really, you know, showed me the ropes. I'd like to extend my gratitude to all the individuals, you know, from Baton Rouge Green to the LSU uh, School of Landscape Architecture, um, Breck, uh, and all the uh, walls and Baton Rouge, all these communities, uh, groups that I probably have, some of which have I probably uh, for left out. But without them and their input, we wouldn't have such a robust um, piece of work that we're going to show you today. So I just wanted to highlight to you what's next um, before we go into all these other things, because I know this will come up a little bit later. Um, right now, we've complete, we're on the process of completing the site survey, and you will see the preliminary designs. Um, and in the first quarter of 2021, we do envision starting to firm up what we want to do, which includes securing additional project funding, um, finalizing construction drawings and project budget, um, and then starting to procure a con uh, construction contractors and actually start breaking ground with the idea that, you know, it's a very lofty goal, a very aggressive goal, but I hope that we can have a park dedication by the end of this year. Like to, so these will be our speakers today, um, Kili McCutcheon, Justin uh, Malcor, Jamin Zhang, and Chad Wilkins, and you'll be hearing from them in a few minutes. I'd like to pass this off now to Professor Kathy Bogowski, who will talk to you about the, the site and the, the restrictions uh, for our project and our goals as well. Thank you so much. And thanks again for the opportunity to share our students to designs ideas with you today. Uh, next slide, please. So our site is in Baton Rouge, located as, as Manny said, on the corner of Plank Road and Myrtle Lawn. It's about an eighth of an acre in size. So it's about 52 feet wide by about 104 feet long. Um, but its location is good from the standpoint that it makes it easily visible and accessible. But Plank Road is a fast moving major road um, and not very visually appealing or safe like walking environment for the people in the community or people visiting the area. Its location um, in general is, we find that there's a lack of street trees, a lot of, um, a lot of paving, a uh, lack of green spaces for passive recreation for the community, or just spaces for people to sit in the shade or to gather in small groups. There's also uh, a lack of continuous walks that kind of come and go and disappear. And a lot of them are in poor condition, which makes them not very accessible to everyone um, if you just want to go out for a walk or run an errand. Next slide. So the next uh, slide you're going to see is really just the view into the site from Plank Road. Next slide, please. And what we did was we the students went out and they did a, and this is just a quick summary of some of the things that they found on the site that were critical and influenced their design decisions. As, so as part of this process, they spoke with the local community people, the neighbors, and were very helpful. And um, they just found some issues that we wouldn't have known about if we weren't on the site every day. There are grade changes on the site uh, that we have to deal with because we want to make it accessible, but also that impacts drainage. There's some issues related to the adjacent building, uh, mostly because of the fact that their downspouts have been disconnected. So there's a lot of flooding. But, and more importantly, the drain that's adjacent to the property or to that building is clogged. And so whatever water does come off that roof is ending up flooding the site. So the students address will be addressing that in some of their designs. There's also overhead utilities and materials left from the building that used to be there that made the soils also difficult. Um, they don't drain as well. So we have some of those issues to deal with. Next, please. So this is the view from Myrtle Lawn. You can see that there, there's some visibility in the site. Uh, next, please. But we did find that there were some other issues that we wanted to address. And you can see that there's no sidewalks on that side of the street. There's no curb cuts um, where you can take a wheelchair or a, um, you know, someone with any kind of walking disabilities to easily get across the street safely, or even a curb that helps manage some of the stormwater 
uh, runoff that we get from the street. So there's drainage and erosion problems. And then the existing trees, regretfully, are, are pretty scruffy and, and have a lot of surface roots and are very filled with poison ivy. So those were some decisions you'll see that the students decided to remove some of the trees on site uh, because of their conditions that they couldn't really be um, fixed. And the overhead utilities, there's a lot of wires running along the side of the street that we have to choose wisely in our plant materials that we place under those wires. Next slide. So this is the original design that they created uh, last semester of what they came up with and, and that we got the, the, the feedback from the community on. Um, this slide shows where what, what their big idea was, which was to make this an eco park or an ecological park. And some of the elements addressed in this is that we, you know, that, that idea of an ecological park means it's sustainable materials are used, um, that we wanted larger, more plant material or landscape in here, a lot of green uh, to both absorb the soil moisture, but also help cool the neighborhood and reduce the amount of, of heat that's, that's radiating off this site, to look for opportunities to collect rainwater, um, to make it as low maintenance as we possibly can as part of that eco park idea and use native plants and provide for a vegetable gardens and plants that can be used to attract pollinators and small wildlife bir birds or desirable ones are the ones that we're looking for. Uh, next slide, please. So some of the other goals and, and some of the things they found as they started designing the site with sections and elevations and you can see some of the things they prepared last semester to tell those ideas. But they also were trying to bring in things like art and murals and artful crosswalks, things that gave some energy and life to the site and reflected the local community. It also uh, included elements that making it safe, making sure that there was clear visibility into the site so people could drive by and see if something was happening in there that shouldn't be, and also make people who are in the site feel safe and want to um, access it. And also looking for ways of mitigating some of the noise coming off of that busy road. Next. So today we're going to be presenting, um, as Manny said, is four of our students, they revised the master plan design for the site they were actually selected out of the 17 students we had in class as the ones that best met the goals of the community and of our, our clients on this project. And they will be, uh, they're all, as we said, fourth year students in our program. And the major drawings that they're gonna be sharing are, as you can see listed here, uh, is their landscape master plan that basically brings all the elements together. So you'll see the plantings, the paving materials, all those things. So you can see the big picture, what the final design would look like in plan. And then also specific views through and across the site and they come in the form of sections and elevations. We did also some precedent images, which are basically they're images that the students found uh, that with similar materials or built designs that represent their idea for the park. Not exactly, but it has a lot of the elements that the they're trying to convey that, that, that th they're thinking of. And that'll help everyone visualize the elements better as they go through it. And then there's some perspective set sketches to help you understand what it would feel like to actually be within certain areas of the park. Next slide. So these were, this is just the other list of um, additional requirements that they got from me, as well as came from the input from our reviewers on this. And I'm not gonna read them all, but I think it's important to understand that there are some elements that as you're looking at their drawings, there are certain things that they are required to meet. And part of it was creating an inviting gateway or signage um, at the entrance that can be easily seen from the adjacent roads and attract visitors into it, provide a new food distribution shed for the community near Myrtle Lawn that can also be used to store garden tools for the park. The park has to be designed primarily for adults. That was what was requested. It's not really, it's not that children or pets can't be there, but that's really not what it's meant for. It's, it was meant to be designed for more adults and it should be designed to however, to allow access for all in terms of 
um, physical ability and so not just for wheelchairs, which is what ADA is, we refer to this as universal design. So there shouldn't be areas where people can't get too easily. Students were also encouraged to use curvilinear forms, which we know um, from research is more restorative or calming and inviting, create an inviting landscape that has shade and flexible lawn area space so that they could use it for, you know, either different types of gathering or just a layout on the lawn. And they are also required by me that they have to have more lawn than or landscape areas than paving. So they were held to about 30% of the site could be hard materials or a paving material of some type or buildings. And the other 70% has to be landscape. The um, last couple of items were multiple seating options have to be provided so visitors can choose whether they want to sit in the sun or shade in groups or individually. And they were also asked to reduce the amount, a number or amount of seat walls that were on the original design that was submitted last semester. They were required to take the stormwater that we were having some issues with and turn it into an amenity, capture it and reuse it or somehow create an artful element out of it and make it educational for people to learn how to handle water that they might have on their own property. We're lucky on this property that it doesn't really flood um, during rather re regular flood events. And lastly, the students were asked to consider a bus stop seating area if there was a future access or transit access to the site. And, and with that, add new corner ramps and artful crosswalks to get pedestrians safely to the park. Uh, next slide, please. Uh, and actually, I've already gone through these, so you can go ahead and just click on that. Keep going. So our first presenter is Keely, and she's going to share how she's addressed these goals in her own design. So I'll turn it over to you, Keely. Thank you. Hello, my name is Keely McCutcheon. I'm from Collierville, Tennessee, and I am a fourth year Bachelor of Landscape Architecture student at LSU. And the goal for my design for the Myrtle Lawn Eco Park was to create an accessible, functional, and safe community park for all the residents of the Plank Road area. Next slide, please. Looking at my, uh, looking at my plan, starting along Plank Road, uh, I've added artful crosswalks that will act as both a functional and artful element of wayfinding to the site. Also along Plank Road, there is a proposed bus stop and bus shelter, which will provide Wi-Fi access to the community. The last element that I've added along Plank Road are infiltration planters, which will help aid in stormwater management and also provide a lush buffer to the park from the busy road. Moving into the site, there is an arched entry sign to greet guests as they enter the park. Once inside the park, there is an accessible picnic area on the north side of the site located on Myrtle Lawn Street. In the bottom left corner of the site is an artful cistern and downspout, which will collect runoff from the neighboring roof. Located just above the cistern is the exercise area, set on top of permeable concrete pavers, which also aid in stormwater management. In the center of the park is a supported lawn and seating area, which can be used as a flexible space for the park. On the bottom right side of the site, along the CNM upholstery building, is a space for a possible wall mural. On the right side of the site is the community garden area, when raised planting beds, also set on top of permeable concrete pavers. Above that area, in the top right corner of the site, along Myrtle Lawn Street, is the food distribution area. This area provides a food distribution shed with solar panels, a seating area, and a drop-off zone. Next slide, please. On this slide are my section and elevation studies, which help provide further context into the changes in elevation within the site, as well as show the movement of elements throughout the site. Section A runs from Myrtle on Street to the CNM upholstery building. In this section, you can see the street, the ramp entryway, planting area, exercise area, and a secondary planting area. Section B runs from the property line of the site to Plank Road. In this section, you can see the community garden, lawn area, exercise area, planting area, the bus stop, 
sidewalk and the infiltration planters. And in the background, you can see the wall mural and the cisterns and downspouts. Next slide, please. My first perspective is a view into the site from the corner of Plank Road and Myrtle Lawn Street. You can see the planters, the bus stop, the concrete retaining wall, and the entry sign into the site. The second perspective is of the exercise area. You can see the exercise equipment as well as the cistern and downspout near the side of the building. Next slide, please. The next perspective is of the community garden area and you can see the raised garden beds. The last perspective is of the food distribution area. You can see the food distribution shed, the seating area, and a secondary accessible seating area on the lawn. Next slide, please. My last slide showcases some of my precedent images key to the plan. They're provided to help provide a better understanding of the color, texture, and materials of some of the site elements. One is the artful crosswalks, two is the bus shelter, three is the arch entry sign, four is the exercise area, Five is the community garden bed. Six is the food distribution shed. Seven is the infiltration planters. Eight is the wall mural. Nine is the artful cistern and 10 are the artful downspouts. Thank you for your time and I'm happy to answer any of your questions. Wonderful, thank you, Keely. Uh, I'd like to take this time for the next like, five minutes or so if anyone has any questions specifically for Keeley's presentation or Keeley's design. We will have the opportunity at the end of the presentation uh, to have uh, to field general questions as well. Hey Manny, uh, this, is, this is Chris Keeley. This is uh, in incredible. Just a, a point of clarification uh, applies to all of the, the presentations, Manny. The bus stop, this is not, is this a scheduled BRT stop or is it just a regular bus stop? Um, at this time, it, it wasn't necessarily understood if it would be one or the okay. other. Okay. So we wanted to leave it open for great uh, for Perfect. I just wanted to, to be clear on that. I didn't know if that was something that had been clarified. Thank you. Uh, Manny, again, are we going to have, we're going to, we're offering commentary now, or are we offering commentary at the end? We're offering commentary now for the specific. Um, okay. Uh, presenters, and then we'll have a, a commentary for the, the general uh, Great. presentation later. Keely, can we go back to your um, your main slide with the, the site plan? Yes. But yeah, that the yeah that one. Um, so so I, I just I really uh, enjoy just the forms. Uh, you're you're kind of you know playing with circles and and, and arches um, is. Um, is is intriguing and it, it it draws me in. I don't know if you had any um, if there was anything in particular that um, led you to choose this type of, of form. But it seems that you're you're playing a lot with these curvilinear um, uh, outlines and, and providing good buffer from the street um, and uh, both streets, uh, but also. Um, you know, kind of retaining some of the character of the, the sidewalk, particularly as you kind of turn and move along uh, Myrtle Lawn. Um, any, 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 anything that led you to that particularly? So I had the opportunity last semester in a different class, we worked on this project and my design and my group was vastly different from this one. We did a very geometric design. And after talking to the community, I knew that they wanted very curvilinear and so, I just tried to figure out a way that I could play off the existing building. Um, as you know, Plank Road is an angled road and the buildings are also angled. So yeah. I kind of use that as a starting point and then just find, found a way to take that line and make it curving throughout the site. Got it. So, so you know, I'm looking at the picnic area and, um, you know, Plank is the main road and, and when it's redesigned, we'll likely have the outer lane as a, as a BRT lane. So you'll have a lot of activity there, um, less so on Myrtle Lawn. And as you kind of approach the corner, uh, I wouldn't expect that there's, you know, cars traveling at a high speed. But have you thought about, you know, I'm just thinking if I'm laying in the grass in, in a picnic area, 
um, I'm kind of close to the street. Uh, did you give any thought to just the relationship between um, car? I mean, I'm not buffered by a sidewalk at that point. Um, and, and I just, I raised that issue because I actually do like what you did with the sidewalk there. But now I, I'm also kind of concerned that uh, users are, are kind of lack any kind of buffer uh, between themselves and the street. Um, at different iterations of the design, I had a mixture of either planting areas there or bollards, but I kind of came to this, this um, I guess this uh, final idea after we visited the site. And like you said, Myrtle Lawn is not a super high traffic area. So I did think that it would be okay to not have any sort of major buffer there, but I could see how it might be needed um, yeah. if people feel like it would make them safer. Do you think there is space to berm, like to kind of maybe build up a natural, uh, you know, kind of berm there, uh, which would maybe give the site, I don't know if there's enough space to do that and retain enough flat area to enjoy a picnic, but um, I'm just thinking that may be a way to create a little drama in the topography of the, of the site while also um, giving you some minimal protection. You know, if, I'm, if, if a child is there in the picnic area and that child runs into the street, you, you may want to, you know, that, that's just one thing that I think about me as having young kids, but um, yeah. I think there's definitely an opportunity to, like you said, add some sort of berm or planting area that I don't think would take up too much space if you wanted to create an extra layer of protection from the street. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Chris. Uh, we have a couple of other questions um, in the Q&A. Um, first from, uh, or sorry, Kristen, would you like to feel, uh, feel those questions? No, that's okay. I just thought they were good questions, so I marked okay. them. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, Shashikant's first question is, will the mural be on the wall of the existing structure of CNN and upholstery? Um, Keely? So we talked to the building owner and I think that there's still a little bit of question of whether or not he would want the, uh, the mural painted directly on his building or create some sort of structure that would sit on his building. So at this point, it could be either way, depending on his preference. Great. Um, Thank you, Keely, for that. Um, Jan Ross of the Wilson Foundation, thank you for, uh, for joining us today. First, I'd like to say that she really liked the downspout uh, garden, very creative, uh, and followed up with the question of, do you have a concern for the solar panels being covered by the shade of the trees as they mature? Um, I think that's definitely something to consider. They could be moved somewhere else. I just wanted to create, provide a source of uh, solar powered energy, and that could be moved to another spot or on another element within the site if the trees would become an issue. Thank you, Keely. Um, and Rochelle has posted a question about uh, who would provide the art for the crosswalk and the murals as been discussed. Um, for the art, I know we are, we're going to be engaging um, the walls project as part of, uh, depending on which, which track we go with, um, to provide, you know, to partner with them to provide, put some public art there and potentially interpret programming, depending on which design is selected and how we, uh, what our budget uh, restrictions are. Um, I think Rochelle had also a follow up question wondering if uh, about propagating indigenous plant species from some of the beds uh, for the purposes of, of learning and having folks be involved with planting in other places in the area. I think definitely that the community garden beds are a good way to grow indigenous plants and also teach. I know that um, Baton Roots has a really good program for that. So I think that working with them would help provide more resources and access for the community to learn about all of that. Great, thank you, Keely. Um, once again, they'll have additional opportunities to, to, to ask questions at the end of the presentation. Um, thank you, Keely. Uh, for your presentation. Thank um, you. Okay. And next we have Justin Melkor. Hey, can you hear me? Yes, sir. All right. Um, thank you everyone for attending. Uh, my name is Justin. I'm uh, from Baton Rouge, lived here all my life. 
Um, and my goal with the project was to create a safe, restorative, and flexible park, which the local community can really take ownership of. Uh, my goal was to design a versatile space with certain elements which the community members have shown interest in, um, including community gardening, exercise, public art, and passive recreation. Uh, a key part of creating a restorative place is in the plantings used um, and exposure to green space, even in settings surrounded by heavy urban condition um, can have all kinds of benefits, including helping to lower stress. Um, the program elements of the park are framed by uh, lush plantings incorporating different colors and textures to create a comfortable and attractive destination. Um, and my goal was to, I had a goal of using mostly native plantings, um, which will help to keep ongoing maintenance costs a little bit lower. Uh, next slide, please. So the main entry is positioned near the crosswalk and the BRT stop with sight lines um, to attract viewers from Plank Road. Uh, the entry features a placemaking arch constructed from recycled metal existing on site. Stepping through that gate, one can follow a curving concrete walk to the left, forming the edge of the lawn, or to the right, leading to the exercise area, which features calisthenic focused static exercise equipment, um, which would be set on a poured in place rubber paving. The concrete walk passes the community gardening beds, which feature a shallow well hand pump. Uh, this pump draws water up from an underground cistern, which receives filtered water from a large flow through planter along the adjacent building. The concrete walk terminates at the garden shed slash food distribution shelter, which is adjacent to delivery access on Myrtleon, which is guarded by some bollards. Uh, seating options can include um, a couple of two top tables right by the garden shed, um, two accessible picnic tables on the lawn and a few park benches around the perimeter on the south side. And next slide, please. So here I've got my precedent imagery, which um, can help to give an idea of what the, some of those things might look like. Um, labeled B, you can see what pervious pavers can look like. Um, I would be using them to, using the, the entry points to mark them as unique and to reduce the drainage impact of those larger paved, paved areas. Next to that, you can see an existing BRT stop. This one is in Aspen, Colorado. The footprint of this shelter um, doesn't exactly match up with what we have available on site, but I think that it's a good illustration of how the bus shelter um, can be made as comfortable and it can, it can really um, connect with the rest of the site. Um, labeled E on the left side, you can see an example of static exercise equipment, um, which would focus on calisthenics and body weight exercises and therefore it will reduce um, maintenance and repair costs. Um, next to that labeled F, you can see um, an infiltration planter, which uses an aggregate to filter debris from water um, before carrying it into uh, drainage systems. Plantings along plank will need to be fairly short so that they don't block sight lines for drivers and people pulling out of Myrtleon Street and also because of existing power lines above. Um, the garden is intended to be laid back and community focused and you can see an example of some raised planters here labeled G um, which allow for ease of access and comfort while working. And in the bottom left, you can see I have an example of um, a colorful, fun mural, um, as well as an example in the bottom middle of a recycled metal uh, archway. And next slide, please. This top section um, I drew to highlight the relationship of the walkways along Myrtleon, the uh, garden area, and the buffer planting along Myrtleon. And it also illustrates uh, how water would be carried from the flow through planter along the neighboring building into the buried cistern um, and then pulled up through the hand pump. The section on the bottom 
uh, shows how the bus stop, the exercise area, the lawn, and the uh, flow through planter uh, relate to each other. And in both, you can also see the intended heights of some of those plantings and how those will help to shape space. Uh, next slide, please. So this first perspective um, is a bird's eye view of the entire park. Um, you can see the scale of the space um, of the lawn and the garden, how those plantings start to shape that space. And you can see the exercise uh, area in the bottom right. Next slide, please. This perspective is looking through um, the entry sign arch and the adjacent bus stop shelters visible on the right side. Um, you can see what those plantings along Plank Road might look like to provide a buffer. Next slide, please. This view is looking into the park from the Myrtleon side um, over a buffer planting um, at the raised gardening beds. Next slide, please. Here is another view of the lawn um, with the flow through planter and the mural visible in the background, um, as well as a few seating options there. Next slide, please. And this final perspective shows uh, the stationary exercise equipment. Uh, this equipment allows for versatile workouts because there's no moving parts and you aren't limited to just one thing. Um, and it will also keep maintenance and repair costs lower and less frequent. So thank you everyone for your time. I'm happy to answer any questions. Great, at this time I'd like to open the floor for questions. Um, Chris, would you like to start us off? Sure, um, well again, uh, great job. This is um, you know, just, just really uh, impressive. And so I, you know, my initial question when you began was regarding uh, sight lines with uh, your your plantings on plank, and and not only um, I was thinking less about traffic, but um, you, you certainly would have to deal with the, the sight triangle that uh, the traffic engineers are going to be concerned about. Um, but um, I, I was also just concerned about uh, visibility from a safety perspective. Mm -hmm. um, that. Um, you know, and, and that, that the hedge along Myrtle Lawn and your 3D image kind of satisfied for me that it appears to be at a scale that is, is, is not going to a, a allow for an obstructed, you know, kind of view, uh, you know, from Myrtle Lawn into, into the site. So um, uh, yeah, there, uh, the, the previous one. Yeah, so if this is what, this is what you envision on, on Myrtle Lawn, right? Yes, absolutely. Looking into the site. So I still have good visibility and, and it doesn't appear like a lot of opportunities for someone to, uh, to hide or whatever um, significantly. Can you go back to your site plan, please? Uh, here again, I, I, I like the curve linear. It appears that you, you, uh, you all are responding to what the uh, community said. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm a little uh, concern that your beds, uh, the flow through planters that you have identified in number six, um, I, I would be concerned that there's a lot of distance between that and the, whatever mural is, is erected. Um, mm -hmm. And that that may create too great a separation uh, between, you know, uh, visitors and, and the mural. Now, again, you know, Casey's on here. Casey, you may have some opinion about whether or not it's even desirable for people to be able to walk right up to the mural. Um, it, and so I don't know what the preferences or even the best practices on that. But that was something um, that uh, I noticed on, on, one, on the one hand, it, it could be a nice backdrop if that's how we see the mural. Um, but if, if, if the mural is something that I wanted to get a little closer to, um, this doesn't uh, allow for that. Uh, it doesn't seem at least in, 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 in scale, but that just could be, um, you know, the rendering. But I like this a lot. Um, uh, the, the, it's, it's lush. It feels lush to me. Um, and um, I, I don't know if from your perspective, from the scale of the site, uh, particularly the, the, the width of the site, if, um, if this is the appropriate amount of, of 
lushness? Is it going to feel closed in or maybe a little blocked out uh, with regards to sunlight? Um, that's the only thing that I would question. But again, it's a beautiful uh, uh, rendering. And I, and I like the, the green uh, uh, space, number three. Uh, the lawn is, is ample and I think can accommodate uh, different functions um, adequately, so. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Chris. Um, and I'm sure Casey will, can provide us with some you know, optional uh, information as well about what's the, the, uh, the ideal in terms of how close or how far people should be from the mural. Should we have a mural on that wall and uh, what's the, uh, how can people appreciate it better? So I'd like to, uh, for Justin, uh, the first question, which is from Jan Ross is, uh, what's the secondary water supply if the pump runs out of store water? Um, at this point, um, I haven't really thought about what a secondary water supply would be. Um, as far as I know, in our survey, um, we didn't get any information about existing water running through the site, or water lines, I should say. Um, and so I don't know if the cost of implementing that would just be uh, if it would break the budget here. Very good. Thank you, Justin. Um, from Cade Van Vieneren, who's from my NYU class on uh, global perspectives on urban sustainability. Um, how would you ensure the security from theft and vandalism, for example, of the community garden, considering it's slightly hidden behind plantings and appears to be open and unprotected by a fence? Would it be lit at night? That's a good question. Um, lighting would definitely be um, necessary here. Um, and as far as theft, um, we, in our meetings with the community, um, we talked about possible fencings or gatings. And in general, it, the, the sentiment was that they were opposed to having things like that um, in the space that they took up um, and the visual factor, but uh, the general idea from what I remember is that it would be kind of an educational garden. Um, and so um, based on its size, hopefully there wouldn't be too many things um, to be stolen. Again, uh, I would love to have some more security there, um, but I'm not sure what the best solution would be. Great, Justin. Uh, two more questions. I think the, the latter one would probably be for more of a general purpose, but um, Shish, uh, Shishikant asked, um, you, you mentioned a hand pump. Is that correct? And where would it be located? Yes. Um, let's see. There is one perspective here that shows it pretty well. Uh, you can see the silver, um, silver pole sticking up on the right side of the gardening beds right there. So it would be located um, close to the garden beds um, and also right next to the uh, curving path. So it would be here kind of at the... Yes. Or right after the, the, the bed there. So yes. And then Adam asked, um, for the exercise equipment, do we have a particular manufacturer or product in mind uh, for the equipment that you showed? I think, let me answer this real quickly and then I'll let Justin answer it. Um, the equipment, obviously, this is all. These are all going to be functions as part of the the budgetary exercise that will happen over the the coming weeks after we design on some of the decide on some of the design aspects of, of the site. Um, however, I'll leave it to Justin to say if he, you know, researched uh, any particular manufacturers and you know any particular favorites or reasons why. Hmm. So. Um... I based the idea off of um, some exercise equipment, some public exercise equipment that's on the um, downtown Greenway. Um, and I contacted people who put that design together um, to try and find out what man manufacturer made it. Um, so far, I haven't gotten that information from them yet, um, but they did tell me that it was uh, custom designed so that they, they used modular parts and it was built in the field. Very good, thank you, Justin. I'd like to thank all the people who've answered, who've been providing questions and I encourage everyone to 
continue to do so as we go through the, the remaining two presentations. Also, I'd like to give everyone, you know, maybe take 30 seconds. I know like we, we've been Zooming and everything else uh, throughout the days and the weeks, and sometimes you don't have that opportunity to stretch our legs. So everyone take an opportunity to stand up a little bit or even in your chairs, you know, stretch your arms, get that blood flowing. You know, maybe that'll uh, get you a little bit more uh, excited about asking some of these questions of these students. And remember, don't hold back. This is part of the process. So next up uh, is Jamin Zheng. Uh, Jamin. Hello, everyone. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Thank you for your coming today. My name is Jamin Zheng. Uh, I'm an international student from China. Um, my goal of this design is using a sustainable way to create a safe, accessible eco park with multifunction for nearby community to use. Next slide, please. This design includes fully ADA accessible smart furnishes, um, clear view, clear view into the site, storm water management, and easily to maintain it. For creating a natural feeling experience, this design includes a lot of green spaces with different functions. The small area at the west side under the trellis is to reducing traffic noise from the plank road to create a quieter space that people want to stay longer. Also, the bus stop will be located under the trellis to get a shade. The green space at the, at the north side at the top along the Merlin Street is the accessible lawn with, with raised vegetable garden, vegetable planter, and food distribution. In the center of the lawn, there is an ADA picnic table with solar panel sit on the permeable paving. Um, there are also some other picnic table, but without the um, so, um, so solar panel, um, it's sit on the lawn at the north east corner of the site. At the center of this park, there is a community garden with a sculpture to provide more color and artful for the park and also can invite the pollinator and small animals to come and to make the site more ecology. At the south side, south side along the building, there is a large, largest green space of this park. It includes a bioswell and an artful cistern to capture the runoff of the ground and collect water from the rooftop building. There is a small bridge that provides access to the interactive mural and the cistern. There is also a loop-shaped outdoor fitness area with permeable paving on the ground. There are three fitness equipments for people to use and two benches for them to get rest. The tree in the center provide a few privacy, but not block the view from outside to ensure the safety. The design provides a lot of opportunity of art and education. The artful crosswalk, mural, and cistern can be painted by community artists or the residents. Also, the bioswale and cistern will provide education function of the stormwater management. Next slide, please. Here's the sections. The first section is cut from the um, Myrtle Street to the building. You can see the accessible lawn, the community garden with a sculpture at the center. And there is a bioswell with a small bridge so people can walk through and get, get to the interactive mural area. The second one is cut from the planting area at the east side of the plank road. Um, to the plank road. Um, this section shows how elevation changed from the plank road to the site. Um, in this section, you can see the fitness area, um, the garden with native flowers and the trellis with planting area underneath that provide shade and reduce the noise from the plank road. Uh, you can also see the mural and artful cistern. Next slide, please. Um, here's the perspectives of the park. Um, the first one at the left shows what you will see from the park entrance. Um, the trellis is like, like a door. When you walk through it, you will enter a natural world. The quieter, it's, it's quieter than outside and there are a lot of green spaces and different color of flowers. And the mural and artful cistern 
will attract you come into the site. And the second perspectives primarily, primarily shows the um, bioswale and, and the garden. Um, bioswale will provide a function of collection, conveyance, filtration, and infiltration of stormwater. And you can also see how bridge connect the mural area to the pathway. The third perspective shows the Gabian retaining wall with the park sign and the com community board and the bus stop sitting. Next slide, please. Um, here are some precedent image of this design. The first one is the bioswale with plants. The second one is the fitness equipment. The third one is the ADA picnic table with solar panel. So people can charge their phone and get Wi-Fi there. Um, the number four is trellis, and that's provide shade and natural feelings. Number five is interactive mural that people can play with. Number six is the park entrance sign touched on the Gabion um, retaining wall. Number seven is the Gabion bench. So most of the material applied in this design will be reusable, recyclable, and easily to disassemble in the future. And that concludes all my um, design. Thank you for your time to listen. I'm happy to answer any question you may have. Thank you, Jaime. This was a wonderful presentation. Um, Chris, would you like to start it off? Uh, certainly. So, uh, John, I mean, this is this is great. Um, I'm, I'm really excited. Can we go back to the uh, first uh, site? Um, site? So, so I love the trellis and I love the sculpture, uh, and I love the placement of the sculpture because it appears to me that it has good visibility from all approach zones, um, and that you could have something iconic, you know, as a um, as a as a site, you know. Uh, a sideline, a destination, you know, kind of a focus, focal point for the park, which could give it some distinctiveness. Um, I, I really liked your rendering where you had the, the image of the trellis kind of creating a canopy effect. And I thought that uh, did a good job to define the entryway to uh, the park. My only question is, um, why the trellis feature is limited to the plank um, myrtle lawn corner entry as opposed to the other entries. And, and maybe, you know, I'm, I'm kind of speaking to myself here, asking, answer my own questions, don't mind me. But I, it may be overkill, but I certainly would like to play with it because, uh, you know, it allows, you know, for, um, you know, a lot of greenery. Uh, a lot of growth and things to, you know, kind of grow and, and hang. And I can imagine over time, it, it'll kind of grow into a natural feature uh, that could be really attractive as a, a, an entry point, right, into the park from all access points. You know, maybe it just needs to be here. Uh, I like how it doubles as a, as a canopy for the bus stop. Um, maybe it's overkill to, to integrate it into the food distribution uh, mm -hmm. or to take it all the way to the edge of the building on the plank side. But you, you have intrigued me to want to play with that as a design element because um, uh, particularly with your rendering, I was very, uh, I was very taken with that. Um, my initial uh, read of the site was that it was a little too segregated, but the more I looked at it, um, I, I grew to like it. And uh, I, I'm really intrigued by the wood decking. Is there any reason why you did in your section, you don't appear to have raised that at all? Um, I, I thought it offered a good opportunity for a stage of sorts, if mm -hmm. there was any kind of community gathering uh, and someone wanted to uh, use this as a stage with the mural as the backdrop, I thought that could be really cool. Um, yeah. And I also thought it was an opportunity with the change in materials uh, uh, with the boardwalk feature to kind of give some elevation on the site um, that you otherwise, you know, may not have. Did you think at all about that or? Um, actually not because at first I want to like, um, the mural is kind of hard to walk to there because it w there is a bioswale, like sometimes it yeah. will with the water, sometimes if there's no water, it will be like the rock 
under there. Uh -huh. So not like I want to this site can be fully ADA accessible. Okay. So even Got people it. who use the wheelchair, Got they it. can act access to the moral area and, and that would be a consequence if you had to step up that makes sense um what's another thing that i have um so in your in your uh scroll forward so i can see one of the renderings uh keep going keep going oh oh yeah maybe it's here go back go back yeah so the the top right hand corner the bioswell and garden now this appeared to be a little barren to me and, and you don't appear to have had any uh, trees uh, in the interior of, of, the, of the site. Any, uh, any, any thoughts about that? Or is that just kind of what I'm looking at here? And maybe the, the, I know the trees are kind of on the, on the perimeter. Um, the, I think the um, basic reason I want, like I didn't put a lot of tree in the center of this park is like for safety. So okay. yeah, you can have the clear view into the site. If there is uh, some trees, maybe will block some of your view. So I, mm -hmm. most of my trees put the, at the edge or the corner of this design, yeah. Good, good, and, and, and that, that, that makes a lot of sense. So, so with the bioswale, uh, water is not always gonna be in there. But it did, you know, this rendering here makes me want water in it. <laughs> and, so, um, and then it made me think about the opportunity for fountains and the sound of water uh, mm -hmm. as being kind of, uh, you know, an, an audio feature to kind of draw me in from the site, almost as if when I move through these trellises, uh, you know, visually I'm attracted by the sculpture, which you didn't include in this rendering, but um, I think is, is really, you know, is a really great opportunity there. But then audibly, I'm kind of drawn in by, you know, a water feature. Uh, and I don't know if uh, there is any benefit to uh, having, you know, a permanent water feature there. Um, I don't know how that impacts uh, the, the functioning of the bioswell. And then which, with, with regards to the bioswell, are, are we at all concerned that with the rocks in there that kids may just end up playing with that and, and rocks may end up all over the site? And um, are we concerned about that at all? Does that happen um, with bioswells? Um, I have a precedent image shows uh, at the next slide. Mm -hmm. um, it won't be like really deep, just like a few, um, just okay. like not that deep, so it will be like really safe, even. People okay. Yeah. And so again, we don't want the water permanently because we're worried about safety and accessibility. Is um, that also if the water permeable, like, um, it will um like cost more money to maintain. Got it. Got it. Well, and I, I love the reusability and, and recyclability of the materials. Um, I think that's a, a great thing to uh, emphasize. So um, this was great. This is, this is really, uh, really well thought out. Thank you so much. All right, thank you, Chris. Um, a couple of points that we'd like to make. Um, some of the, the students also took into account that there's a lot of concrete slabs and how can they could reuse some of the materials on site. And as you saw at the previous uh, three, presentations, they have taken that to, to heart. Um, to the point of uh, the question by William Berger, uh, would local history and culture, as well as native plants be promoted in the parks? Before Jamin answers, I wanted to take this opportunity to say that Casey in conjunction with um, uh, the newly, uh, the, the, their ability to potentially get a, uh, an NEA uh, Our Town grant um, we have, he has engaged a, uh, an artist in residence uh, from the Chicago area named Fahim Majid, who's expressed a lot of interest in potentially contributing some sort of public art feature that does incorporate um, some of the community and local history as well. Um, and to that end, you know, with the, with the, um, the bridge and the, the panels there, it was kind of a nod that she and some of the other uh, students as well made to the history of the Plank Road, right? What does Plank Road actually mean? It was the use of planks to bring, you know, materials um, up and down uh, the, the along the the river as well. Um, and to the other point about the water feature, 
you know, the students did have a constraint of $70,000. Um, we made that conscious as opposed to the first iteration where it was just, you know, what was that, the, if you had no budget, right? What would you yeah. do? Um, in this case, the idea is of course, if, you know, there's any wealthy donors online who want to contribute more money to augment our budget. Um, but the idea is uh, our project would have a phased approach and phase one having some of the basics. Mm -hmm. And this is where the idea of the modularity of some of these components comes in, yeah. where some of the things can be added or taken away and replaced with something better in the phase two, phase three, so on and so forth. Well, um, and I think that, that, that was the same situation with the trellis is they were actually asked to trim it back due to cost. Yeah. So okay. I think that would be a great thing to expand it with um, some additional funding. Well, that you both of you are getting into what my, you know, a preview of what my parting question to all the presenters is going to be is, is what are your uh, upscaling priorities? So that's, that's a preview on that, but, but we'll come back to it. <laughs> Great. So I'd like to, you know, Jan would like to comment on the, the wonderful use of color that Jamin uh, used in her presentation. And she wanted to understand a little bit more and interrogate this idea that this park was uh, addressed for seniors and, and how, how are we inviting them, encouraging them to use just the park, but also the exercise of uh, equipment uh, parts as well. Is it, how are you marketing or gearing it towards them to, to use it rather than just having a bunch of kids overrunning it, so on and so forth? Um, I think like, first, I think the most important thing is like how to attract them to come into the park. So my idea is like using the mural and artful, when they come, like when they enter in the park, they will find, oh, there is some, um, equipment, there are other things they would like to use it. So um, I think maybe that's the answer for that one. Yeah. Sure. Thank you, Shannon. So uh, Shashikanda also asked the question of some of the creepers used on the trellis in the perspective drawing, which I can go back to real quick. Um, the idea is, you know, we, we have engaged the Baton Rouge, which gave the students a list of, you know, the, the native species of the area. But to the question is, um, will, how well will the creepers do in this climate? Um, like, Jamin, do you have any uh, idea about that? Um, actually, I haven't um, thought about that before, um, but I will figure out that, like, yeah. Very, very in, in interesting question. I'm sure with uh, roots and some of our other uh, floor specialists who are within Breck, Baton Roots, uh, Louisiana Audubon, things like that, we can definitely understand which would uh, flourish in this, air, uh, this neighborhood. Um, Angela Harms of Breck, which is the Baton Rouge uh, Department of Parks and Recreation, I'm asked, you know, the, the materials are very, are set, stated, the materials are very unique and welcoming, uh, and, and, and as well as being pretty cost effective. Um, the way the trellis interacts with the bus stop and park really brings some more cohesiveness to this, like connects the, the, the user uh, or the, the visitor to all parts of it, so it's very good. Um, William Berger had a follow-up question, which is he likes the as well, and safety must be considered. Um, you know, there, there is some risk of flooding you know, based on you know, previous history, and some of these students are already uh, aware of that. Um, you know, how th there is, so I guess the, the general statement is, you know, safety must be considered in terms of the flooding. Um, thank you for that, William. And then Kim just likes to reiterate, you know, just so, so many great ideas, you know, very impressed with the, the presentation designs, looking to see, uh, looking forward to see what comes next. Thank um, you. Great. All right, so let us um, move on to our final presentation for today, which is by Chad Wilkins. Chad, take it away. Hello, everybody. Um, my name is Chad, and I'm from Madisonville, Louisiana. Um, I'll start off by talking about some of the goals that I had uh, for my design. Um, and um, I was inspired uh, to design um, uh, by creating a sustainable design and to create a space that would be restorative for the local community. Uh, some of my goals were to uh, recycle the existing concrete slabs. Oh man, if you wanna pull up the first slide, you can do that. Thank you. Uh, recycle the existing concrete slabs and use them in a swale. I uh, created an infiltration planner along Plank Road that could filter the first flush along 
with educational signage and the bus stop about the possibilities of green infrastructure. Um, we heard last semester when we originally met with the community, actually got to meet in person, uh, that they were interested in an iconic entrance. Uh, so creating a gateway entrance from the existing metal railing on site and repurposing that, um, creating raised vegetable gardens with educational signage, uh, use of permeable paving to allow for more stormwater collection and recharging the groundwater and avoid over using the stormwater systems, uh, creating murals and art sculptures by local artists, as Mandy had spoken to, such as the Walls Project. And then uh, creating, um, we know that this area uh, lacks, um, a lot of homes lack internet usage. So providing Wi-Fi, uh, possibly through a partnership through Cox. So next slide, please. So um, as you, uh, after you walk through the artful crosswalks on the road, you would enter through the iconic gateway at the northwest corner of the park, where you would be greeted by, greeted by, the, uh, by a vertical metal art sculpture surrounded by plants. Uh, the pavement you'd be walking on is a permeable paver, which allows for rainwater to enter through the joints, uh, avoiding, as I was saying, avoiding overworking the stormwater management systems. As you move to the left, there would be a seating area. Um, or if you went to the right, you would find the small exercise area with cardio and strength training equipment. As you continue ahead um, to the east there, you will find the uh, garden storage building. Um, and behind that, uh, creating a space for unloading and loading zone along Myrtleon Street to allow for easy access to the building for the people coming and going uh, there. Uh, just to the south of the building, you'll find the vegetable garden area surrounded by decomposed granite uh, to allow for ADA access in that area. And as you move through the garden, you'll find the supported lawn uh, with some benches and picnic tables and a turf mound. Um, and in this area, uh, I could see uh, programming for small community gatherings or group exercises and yoga classes. And surrounding as much of the site as possible would be planting areas. And that would envelop the site with native plants to create an area of restoration for the visitors of the park. And any rainfall that falls on the site would drain towards the bioswale along the edge of the south site, south edge of the site, uh, which would have a French drain to assist in heavy rain events uh, that connects to an existing outflow pipe. Next slide, please. Uh, this section uh, shows the interaction from Myrtleon Street through the community garden over the turf mound to the edge of the property there. Next slide, please. Uh, this section runs west to east facing um, from Plank Road and it will show the interaction of the infiltration planner moving across to the sidewalk through the exercise area, uh, the community garden, the turf mound again. Next slide, please. Uh, this section uh, runs south to north uh, and shows the, that's the CNM upholstery there, the building, and shows the uh, bioswale and how the lawn slopes toward it to drain the runoff and the interaction between the paved area and the turfed area uh, and Myrtle on Street. Next slide, please. So this is a perspective of what it might look like to walk into the park. And you can see the sculpture um, as an as a entryway icon there. Next slide, please. And this perspective gives an idea of what it might look like to walk into the community garden area. Uh, next slide, please. And these are some of the president images to give you an idea of the types of products or ideas that I'm thinking about for the park, such as the permeable paving, um, the turf mounds, the bioswale, the outdoor fitness equipment. Um, a colorful crosswalk, uh, the wall murals, um, the raised vegetable gardens with wood and uh, corrugated metal. 
And uh, that concludes my presentation. If anybody has any questions, I'd be happy to answer them. Great, thank you so much, Chad. Um, Chris, once again, would like to start us off? Thanks, Chad. This is, again, uh, really great work. Um, so a, a few things. I actually, um, I actually really like your um, spatial uh, arrangements with the paving uh, kind of closer to the street and the green space kind of, uh, you know, kind of wrapping the, 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 the back of the, um, of the site from, from all directions. I, I, I do like that. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a little concerned about the large trees on plank, um, which is kind of, I, I think, and I, you know, I have to see how it would play out three dimensionally, but my concern is that it's kind of uh, limiting the impact of, of the approach zone traveling north on plank, right? That I, 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 I'm, I'm, I could potentially with all of the, the the shading of the trees and the greenery, you know, kind of not really get to experience much of the site visually until I get to the corner where I come in through your entry. And that may be intentional. Um, uh, and, and, and certainly it, it's, it's one perspective on the design, but um, that is something that I'm, I'm a little intrigued about. Uh, I love the turf mound. Uh, if you can't tell by my comments, I love uh, any type of, you uh, um, uh, to, to, topographical, uh, uh, you know, difference uh, is, is really good. And I, I like that you've done that here and uh, your treatment of the food distribution building uh, and the um, planters uh, is also well done. Uh, I like that. Um, that you also have a central place for a sculpture um, it, which appears to be, you know, well celebrated. I'm, I'm concerned, though, that I really only get the impact of the structure visually. Maybe if I'm traveling westward on Myrtle Lawn um, and at the corner, if I'm traveling south on Plank, um, you know, I don't know if that tree, that, that greenery there at the corner of Myrtle Lawn and Plank is kind of blocking my view. I think when you have a sculpture piece like that, then it really does... Um, uh, give you an opportunity to kind of treat your approach zones differently so that you can really, you know, see that iconic art, you know, art piece as you are approaching and, and be drawn into the site uh, from multiple uh, directions. But I, I do like your placement here and the way that the, the paving kind of encircles the um, sculptural piece is, is really, um, is, is, is well done. So it's just, I, I'm just, um, again, uh, probably at this point laid bare all of my, my uh, kind of predispositions here, uh, you know, and I, I think a lot about approach zones. So I want to be able to experience that sculpture from more than just the perspective of the gateway entry. Uh, sure. so that is, um, you, you didn't give much treatment to the mural. Um, oh, uh, um, I do have a mural. Uh, mine is not on the CNM upholstery building. Okay but it would be placed on the uh, food distribution building. Okay, okay, all um, right. Okay, so good. probably on, uh, my thought would be that it would be kind of like a multi, on multiple walls of the building. Okay. Um, then what do you propose to do with that CNM upholstery wall? Um, are we greening up against that? And, and, and uh, you know, it's kind of a hard barrier there. Do you yeah. see it, it could be greened or, I mean, what do you see for that? So uh, I visualize plantings along the wall there. Okay. Um, the, uh, the gentleman when we were there came out and spoke to us and he was um, not so open to a mural <laughs> on his building, yeah. although he had said he was uh, last semester. So I don't, you know, I don't know. Um, yeah. Uh, I so think I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead, please. I, I was just saying my choice was to just uh, remove that out of the equation and put it somewhere that we controlled completely. Got it. And this may be, uh, this may be something that would, you know, given your, the scope you all had, be limited by cost. Um, but, you know, I'm just thinking of, of, of that wall kind of being this terminal, you know, kind of visual feature of the site. Uh, and, and is there an opportunity to go vertical with the green um, uh, so that we, you know, kind of 
you know, dress it up or, or integrate it more into the natural features of the site. Yeah. And to speak to your, um, you can kind of see it here in this uh, illustration. Uh, mm. I don't think the plantings along uh, the edge of Myrtle Lawn and Plank would uh -huh. be so high that it would be hiding the art piece. Got it. Um, Got it. I see. Great. Great. Awesome. So uh, to, to one Thank of the you, points that, um, that Chris and Chad are talking about in terms of the approach zones, for those of you who are not familiar, there is a very high propensity of vehicular pedestrian vehicular accidents um, along Plank Road because of the intermittent or non-existent sidewalks, um, as well as limited, if not none, uh, stoplights along the corridor. So th those approach zones are very important uh, for pedestrian safety and child safety as well, especially with, and the, 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 the older adults who are, who will be frequenting the site. Um, uh, well, let me go to our questions. So uh, William Berger poses this as a, as a resident of, of Baton Rouge. He drives along Plank Road to get to work. Um, you know, how could a, you know, a community garden, you know, in addition potentially to the raised beds, be added uh, maybe to you know, increase that, not only the visibility of the site, but also the calming effect on drivers? Chad? Um, let's see. So his question was, how could or should a vegetable community garden be added? Yes. So I'll go um, to your uh, site here. Yeah. So uh, when we met uh, last year with, um, uh, I think we met with four, we had a community meeting with four different members of the, of the community, and it was something that they very much wanted. Um, and they, uh, they asked for that. As far as if it could be done, it, it can be done very easily. Um, there's, a, there's a group in Baton Rouge that does it all over, all over town. Um, and so it's accomplishable. Um, so I, I think it's feasible to do. Uh, it's a reasonable, it's a reason, reasonable project to, to accomplish. Uh, and it was something that the people we spoke with desired. Yeah, very good. And it's also, you know, there's, there's so many design constraints and budgetary constraints. So with the, each of the students' designs, you know, what they prioritize based on the feedback from the community, first and foremost, is what they've shown here. Um, also, there's this idea of the phased approach, what can be added as we go through the, the history of the lifespan of the park. And William would also like to reiterate that, you know, the thoughts and considerations put into all these designs, same thing with Professor Haley Blakeman. Um, and you know the, the reflection and the really the mindfulness of including the community's uh, input uh, desires has been is admirable for all four of these students and all the students who participated in, uh, in this exercise. So thank you. Um, Jan Ross has a, a question: Is of is there a concern of having the infiltration gardens right uh, butting up against uh, Plank Road? And it, could it be dangerous to cars due to the di uh, difference in elevation from the road to the site um, and the gardens? Sure. Um, so the, the difference in elevation there would be like a normal curb. It would just have a cut in the curb to allow water to flow into it. And if you want to show the um, one of my sections has that uh, shown to give an idea of what um, I'm speaking of. I think it was this one, no. Uh, no, this, one, yeah. this one right here. So it would be like a normal, a normal six inch curb on the side of the road. It just allows water to flow into it so that we can, um, we can filter that water that comes off the road there before it enters into the stormwater system. Yeah, and, and similar to what happens in some of the sites in New York and other cities, um, these gardens actually help with you know, the, the, the drainage off of the road and may help prevent some of those vehicular accidents as well. And, and it, since it is going to be a normal six inch curve, it should uh, can, you know, deal with those issues. Um, Shane Figueroa had a question about the turf mounds. Um, specifically, um, does it require any additional upkeep other than mowing? Is it going to be real or synthetic? Um, uh, how do you envision like the, the material for the turf and how would you make that elevation as well? Sure. Um, so elevationally, uh, I think it would be created um, largely out of the, we would have to excavate some soil there uh, to create the park. 
so we would use that to create the mount. Um, and then as far as maintenance, uh, just normal string trimmer, um, regular lawn maintenance. Um, and then it would be a supported lawn. So um, meaning that uh, there's um, a plastic uh, material or um, a tarp of some sort, maybe. Yeah, it's, it's like a, um, a hard plastic material that supports the turf so that it doesn't wear out as fast. Very good. Um, William Berger also wanted to reiterate that the you know, make make sure there's much as uh, much effort as possible given to restoring you know the natural flows of a of uh, of both across and within the area um, of the locals you know water pa uh, streams and things like that and make sure that safety in terms of the vision of ve vehicles and uh, pedestrians is preserved as well. Thank you, William. Yeah, yeah so th this idea of preserving you know, pedestrian safety and as well as the residential safety as at that intersection has been taken into consideration a, a lot by not only the community, but also the local uh, stakeholders such as PREC and um, other organizations. Um, Pat LaDuff, thank you, Pat, for, for joining us today, uh, you know, from the Scott Laville uh, Community Development Corporation. Um, wants to know how, uh, what are some other ways of how you can celebrate that bus stop, whether it's going to be the BRT or a regular CATS uh, bus stop. Um, you would also like to reiterate that, you know, she'd love the, the colorful crosswalks and maybe that can be set a precedent for more colorful crosswalks throughout the corridor. Um, and wants to also talk about the connectivity of travel uh, going north for future projects, potentially bike pathways, greenways, and the like. Uh, yeah, um, our, I guess there's no, as of right now, there's no plan for a bus stop there. Uh, but our hope is that um, along with this park that we could get a bus stop put there uh, to make it, a, um, make it a spot that becomes part of the community. Um, and I agree with you, Pat, about the uh, colorful crosswalks. Uh, you should probably write your uh, state representative because the state uh, Department of Transportation doesn't like them. So um, contact them and tell them to do something about that. And then maybe we could see more stuff like that in our state. Awesome. Thank you, Chad. So I'd like to take this opportunity to once again, thank all of our presenters, Keely, Justin, Jamin, and Chad for their wonderful designs and the, the professionalism in terms of responding to all these questions. Um, I'd like to open up the floor to everyone for any general questions or comments about the entire uh, presentation um, and the, the, the future of this project. I know Chris wanted to kick us off with um, some general questions to all the panelists first. Sure, um, and I, I, I love all the questions that uh, have been uh, put forth and I hope um, those continue. Um, a question to all four of you, and you've done amazing work and I'll speak to just some of the impact of what you're doing in my closing remarks at the end. Um, if I told you we had, uh, you know, and I'm not saying we do, let me be clear about this, <laughs> but if I told you we had a, a, some more money uh, uh, to, uh, to, to put into this project, um, each of you, give me your top three priorities um, for how you would want additional funds on your design to be spent, uh, either with features that you've already um, incorporated that you would like to see expanded or upscaled or, or, or whatever, or things that you didn't include because of costs that you would, you know, want prioritized. So uh, maybe each of you can just, you know, say what those top three things in, in priority order would be. That would be great. Great. So let's uh, start with Keely and go in the order of how um, you all presented today. Keely? Yes, I think that something that I didn't include that I would include if there was more money would be maybe some sort of overhead structure. I really tried to focus my design on creating natural shade and overhead. And so I think adding some sort of built overhead structure like the trellis that some of the other classmates have added, I think that would be top priority for me. I think secondarily, I would want to 
maybe get some sort of the seating and stuff to be more site specific, something built custom for the site that feels like it wasn't just set in there for manufacturer, but was built to fit into the site specifically. Um, and that also goes along with, I guess, my third thing that maybe something more permanent for the food distribution shed, because I think right now a lot of us are looking at some prefabricated sheds, but finding like, again something that feels like it was made for this site and specifically for this site. So I think that's the things that I would add if we were to have a bigger budget, more money. And, and Keely, I think in your original design, you had some sale, like uh, sales as shade. Originally, we told you to take it up because it was too expensive, right? Yes, I had some overhead trellises in my original design. Awesome. Justin? Yeah, um, I think first thing to mind would be um, incorporating utilities. Um, I think it would be a useful helpful move to um, incorporate solar on the power or on, on the food distribution shed that could be used for um, either visitors charging something simple like charging their phone while they're sitting at one of those little tables um, or even event planners could um, plan to bring um, generators or something like that. And that would probably require um, connection to um, city grid as opposed to solar, but utilities would be the first thing. Um, incorporating some more interest into the paving use. So instead of choosing concrete for my curving path, I would um, look at some other options that may uh, cost a little bit more money, but would um, add some extra interest to the site. Um, and then in a similar vein, probably adjusting the plant selections. Um, making some room for annual beds um, and things like that um, to really bring a pop of color. Justin, can you expand a little bit more on the, the pavement side of things? Like, what, Can you give an example for our audience? Uh, yeah, so I've got two smaller areas that are using uh, precast concrete pavers. Um, some other options um, that I particularly like are, um, could be, um, concrete with other things added into it um, or uh, I like a lot of stone materials as well um, and they can give it a more refined look than the concrete. Great thank you Justin. Uh, Jamin? Um, I think the first one I think I want to expand the trellis a little bit more and maybe add some um, smart furniture for the bus stop so people can charge their phone, like not, not have to be in the solar, solar picnic table area. Maybe they can just ch um, charge their phone when they're waiting the bus. And um, third one, maybe add some small water features. Yeah, that's my top three. Very good, thank you, Jamin. Um, Chad? So I would say um, the first one I would do is um, I removed out of my original concept had a subsurface water collection uh, that I took out because of cost. Um, uh, the secondly, I would add some sort of overhead uh, feature, whether it be trellis or sails or something like that. And uh, thirdly, I would turn that um, art sculpture into some sort of water feature. Maybe have that arch sculpture be the water feature, right? Well, exactly. So yeah. Integrating those two. Very yeah, good. exactly. Yes. Awesome. Um, hey, thank you. Uh, Chris, I'm going to uh, go over some of the questions from the audience and then we'll shift back for okay. you for any, uh, unless you have any additional uh, no, questions. No, please go ahead. Please go ahead. All right. So uh, Brian Watkins asked the first one, I said everyone did an amazing job. So yes, I'd like to reiterate that you're uh, the fourth panelist here, as well as um, I'd like to give a special um, Thank you to Professor Kathy Bogowski for doing such a, a great job considering the, the time of COVID and being virtual and the amount of weather-related delays for class time for all the students. It's, it's, a, it's a testament to their dedication to this project. So thank you all. Um, it has Brian has four questions. One, this is, I, I guess anyone can answer this. Um, what types of trees are are you planning on planting in the park? So maybe each one can 
answer these questions individually. Um, two, are we taking into consideration, you know, the trees as they mature? Um, understanding that, you know, the root structure, especially if you bring something close to the property uh, adjacent to it, how it might impact the foundation. Um, and three is the, the design phase we're des uh, designing. This is uh, where maintenance vehicles can get into the park and, uh, and, and park and prune some of the, or remove the trees. So I think for that question three, a lot of the students uh, put in a drop off zone or loading unloading zone on the murder wall in um, the, the northeastern corner there. Um, and then number four, which is, will the trees have irrigation for their establishment? So I don't know if anyone wants to go over those three questions, which are mainly relating to the, the trees in terms of their, you know, what kind of trees, planning for their maturity and their irrigation. Who would like to take the first? Uh, uh, I can speak to it, um, or I can speak to at least for my choices. Um, we had to, or we were asked to choose um, some different trees. Uh, so to give you an idea, I looked at some um, some different options for shade trees would be uh, something like a green ash or a red maple, southern magnolias, sycamores, or maybe a chest, swamp chestnut oaks. Um, and then for smaller flowering trees would be something like a fringe tree, red buds, parsley hawthorn, silver bells, or sweet bay magnolias. Um, and then as far as taking into maturity, that was um, definitely given consideration. Um, <clears throat> and then as far as maintenance, uh, I think the park is very small, so um, there would be no ability, no access for trucks to drive into the site. Uh, so they would have to park on the outside and, and come and walk in. And then as far as irrigation, there's no uh, water on site. So irrigation um, is not a possibility at this time. Uh, so it would have to be something like a gator bag or something like that as they started off. Thank you, Chad. Um, any of the other presenters wanted to add anything to Chad's response? All right. Uh, thank you, Chad, for that very comprehensive response. So Shashika wanted to ask as a general question, uh, I guess this is for, for us, um, will we be selecting one of the designs out of the four presented? Um, that will be up for the deliberation between uh, Coast City Baton Rouge, Build Baton Rouge, and Breck, who are going to be the three main partners um, this, uh, working on this. And we'll have some decision about that uh, in the coming weeks. Um, but we do, we will be taking the audience's opinions into play, as well as the community members, of course, as a priority, um, which will uh, come in as part of the responses from your surveys um, uh, that uh, someone put in the chat as well before, but I think one of our moderators can re-add it uh, to the chat uh, for you to respond to. Um, Danny Lee, um, who is one of our you know, first in the pool here from Exxon, who provided additional, uh, the initial seed funding of $5,000 for this park. Um, so thank you, Danny and, and Exxon Mobil. Um, you know, I wanted to say really appreciated reviewing the submission. Um, and it goes to, you know, once again, it goes to the quality of education that LSU is providing or the Louisiana State Educational System is providing um, for its students. So thank you for that, Danny and Exxon Mobil for their uh, initial seed funding for this project. Um, Lauren Williams would like to ask um, for anyone who wants to respond, um, is there a particular reasoning why all the food distribution centers are located in the same spot? I'm wondering for accessibility and ease, why aren't they located closer to the intersection along the busier road? So I'll take a first response at this and, and the four presenters and anyone else, including uh, Chris or Kathy would like to jump in. Uh, we decided to put it off there because of the loading and un unloading. If you had a truck that was blocking Plank Road, it's not as if there, for those of you who are familiar, there's not um, an ax, uh, another ax road that where they can pull over and then other cars can pass through. It's a, four lane road and, um, and wider and narrower at certain parts. And it's kind of hard to do that with uh, obstructing traffic. So we wanted to put it off to the side on Myrtle Wall Street. Um, Kathy or any of the other students like to respond to that question? I would say, you know, part of it is, is just what you said is Myrtle, Myrtle Lawn is a much quieter, much, much quieter street. And by pushing it to that upper uh, right-hand corner, 
it allowed for some stacking of cars as well. So if people wanted to pull up and park along Myrtle Lawn, they could do that. And also having it where, as you said, if a car was parked, and some of them did, I don't know if all of these concepts did, but they did have a, a, some kind of a, a curb cut that a truck or a small vehicle could back up into the space to offload into that, that building. And so had to be carefully located to make sure really we weren't impacting um, that busy, busy traffic on Plank Road and making it safe for people to unload and um, reload their cars as they needed to. Great, thank you, Kathy. I'd like to move on to Danny's, he had a follow-up question. Um, and as we all know, for those of you who are familiar with the Plank Road North Baton Rouge, some of these abandoned, blighted, vacated properties have issues of illegal dumping. Um, that's plagued residents for North Baton Rouge for, for years. Um, so are the natural elements of the designs uh, that could serve the, the, as natural deterrence for a potential um, illegal dumping as a local issue? We've actually been pretty lucky on this site. Um, the owner of the store, the upholstery store next door has been caring for this property for about five years. And one of the arts of creating these spaces is that giving it, making it the ownership of the community where they look out for it. And they're very protective of these kind of spaces that are, are built for them. So, you know, they haven't had dumping on this property up to this point. And I think if we design it and it looks cared for and heavily used, lots of eyes are on the park. I think that that's gonna deter some of those, those issues that we have um, had in the past in other places. Yeah, and to reiterate, so as part of this project is one of the first ones developed of, you know, Build Baton Rouge's land bank. Uh, we're looking at how we can start doing exactly what Kathy said, you know, develop community ownership and de de deter illegal dumping, and maybe in some cases using some of those materials as part of the, uh, the materials for the construction of these sites. Um, and go ahead, Kathy. I was just going to say, and one of the other things that I, I don't think the students touched on much was we did talk with the owner um, next door and talked about actually adding some security lighting so that it's not a dark space all the time um, or either it's, it's um, activated by motion, but something that some kind of lighting that could be incorporated that wouldn't disturb the local neighborhood, but it's, it's actually fairly bright because of the lighting on Plank Road. Um, but I think that, that that does need to have a little bit of um, lighting addressed on the sites. Great. Um, and Pat LaDuff wants to know if you know, we'll be able to combine different aspects of, of each of these uh, schematic designs uh, for the final plan. Um, yes, um, that's going to be, of course, the, 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 the problem, I guess, the embarrassment of riches we have from all these great designs is Angela Harms of Breck was just brought up of. They'll have a tough time to, to select just one. Um, they, all these great students have provided some great um, ideas and we'll see how we can incorporate, maybe not you know, the exact uh, design, but how we can incorporate some of the, the best features of, of each. Um, and she, um, Pat also wanted to know about the, the trash receptacles. Um, I don't know if any one of the students wanted to respond to that um, and uh, you know, where the trash receptacles may be within these different site designs. I could speak to it briefly. Um, as part of the project, um, we also worked on some construction documents and that did explore um, materials and um, amenities like that, where they would be placed, how many there would be and things like that. Um, I, th I think to um, make our presentations a bit more respectful of time, we left some of that stuff out for this presentation. Very good, thank you, Justin. Um, and for Angela, once again, is definitely gonna have a tough time picking one design. Um, the, yes, the, the progression of work, you know, for me, who's worked on this with a lot of people on the call since um, you know, June or, or May of 2019, and when I first came up with this idea based on these community conversations to the formation of the steering committee, engaging LSU as the School of Landscape Architecture and professors Tracy Birch, uh, Haley Blakeman and now uh, Kathy Bogaskin, seeing how these students have 
you know, shepherded the idea into a concept, into a design, and, and to be as robust as they are now has been great. Um, it will be definitely, you know, uh, hopefully one of many uh, uh, pocket parks uh, within the, you know, Bill Baton Rouge's land bank um, portfolio. Um, and the idea that with the question, I think it was already answered, but, you know, who's going to maintain um, these sites, uh, there, there is definitely um, uh, the idea that, well, Bill, Bill Baton Rouge is uh, going to enter into maybe some sort of uh, MOU, and Chris can speak to this a little bit more, um, with uh, Breck uh, once the site is fully constructed to help with the management agreement. Um, there is also this idea on the table of, similar to some of the uh, parks throughout the country, of having a friends group as well that can help with some other maintenance programming, um, as well as fundraising for the park as we go forward. Um, Chris, did you want to speak to that a little bit more? No, I think you've, I mean, I think you've covered it. Um, you know, Breck is, uh, has been a part of this conversation uh, for a while now, and we appreciate their partnership. Certainly, uh, Bill Baton Rouge is as excited as we are about turning uh, vacant uh, lots into pocket parks. Uh, we are not in the park management business. So, um, <laughs> and we want this to be an asset that is well maintained and something that everyone can be proud of. So we thought about the long-term stewardship of the park on the front end and, and that's where Brett comes in. So, um, you know, having them as a part of this process, obviously they will ensure that what uh, the final design, the final design that is chosen is something that is feasible and maintainable. Uh, so um, that that is being thought about on the front end here. Yeah, that kind of leads into to Brian's question about you know, the different types of trees being used. Um, it will definitely be, you know, Baton Rouge has already provided a very an extensive list of native species. Breck's expertise will also be um, paramount in terms of designing, you know, not only the physical features, but also the, the flora as well, the natural features, and what's going to be not only cost efficient, but also have the most success of, of flourishing in this area. Uh, as well. Um, so thank you, Brian, for that question or comment. Um, Chris, would you like to close us out here before we let everyone go? I, I want to thank everyone, uh, uh, you, Manny, for just uh, being at the head of this project for over a year now. Um, to get to this point and to see these beautiful designs is, is uh, just uh, really uh, gets me full because it is uh, indicative of the progress that we continue to make with the, the Co-City partnership and the community partnership and all the people who have poured into this effort to get it to this point. Uh, thank you, Professors uh, Bogaski and, and, and Blakeman and, and Birch uh, for uh, partnering with us, for seeing this as worthy of, uh, of a pedagogical exercise uh, that um, will enhance your students' learning and, um, uh, and, and the work that you do in the classroom. We're, we're excited to be a partner. I hope you will always think of us when you have other projects or see other work that we're doing uh, in the community and throughout Baton Rouge and, and want to marry what you're doing in the classroom and your research with what we're doing. Uh, to the students, uh, I, I don't know if they share it with you. I am a 1998 graduate of Howard, uh, Howard University School of Architecture. And I spent five years uh, doing juries like this, uh, preparing boards, uh, designing things, staying up all night, uh, you know, bracing myself for all types of criticism and questions that uh, I never felt uh, prepared enough to answer. You have done uh, amazing work here. You should be proud of yourself. You are a stellar representation of the caliber of talent coming out of, of LSU's School of Landscape Architecture and Design. Uh, and uh, I really appreciate you taking this seriously uh, and, and really giving it your best. Uh, all of these designs are just so intriguing, so impressive. And, and through your answers to the questions that have been posed, you've displayed a level of thoughtfulness. Uh, you've displayed a sincerity uh, and you've displayed a level of professionalism uh, that is uh, just really exceptional. And uh, I, I really appreciate uh, the work that you've done here. And um, uh, I know how hard this is and I know uh, how important it is to your educational and career development. So uh, please um, uh, stay tuned uh, to this work and I'm sure we'll be in touch with you. Uh, I see many things as I know the 
commenters and people who've asked questions uh, agree that we certainly want to see reflected in uh, the final design for, for the pocket park. So uh, we appreciate your, your creativity your, uh, and, and the inspiration that you, you've given us. And thank you so much for um, uh, uh, getting through this. Congratulations. This, is, uh, this has been great and I hope you've enjoyed this experience as well. Thank you, Chris. And I want to thank, once again, thank everyone from the students to LSU's uh, School of Landscape Architecture, Breck, and all the other partners who have been on this since day one uh, for, for coming out and participating uh, in this webinar. Um, for those of you, as a reminder, this will be recorded and we will be posting it. So please share with your networks. Um, as we move forward with this project, um, if someone in your networks wants to participate, um, either as part of the, you know, the, the committee for this or any of the other projects going on, but as well as part of the, you know, the construction process or the design process. We are looking for folks who you know, ideally may want to do this pro bono, but we understand that you know, there are costs. So we will you know, work with you on that. Um, but we are looking for those to actually start making this project a reality. And you know, starting in January, we will be working with Breck and BBR um, to start um, doing, firming up the designs and starting creating those construction schematics. Christy, and Manny, I just, I wanna emphasize that it, it is important to note, uh, this is funded. We have funding for this uh, through uh, the uh, help of ExxonMobil. And I wanna again, uh, reiterate our, our thankfulness to them uh, through uh, uh, Brett's, uh, agree, uh, Brett's agreement to uh, be a steward for this park over the long term and, and, and through the Advancing Cities grant uh, through JP Morgan Chase. So this will be happening and um, you will see uh, your uh, uh, plans reflected in something that actually gets built, which is uh, more than anything I ever did in architectural school. So uh, <laughs> congratulations to all of you for that. Yes, and I'd like to reiterate the, um, that we'll, we're, we'll be sending out a, a, an exit survey about you know, understanding what you are, your feelings of, different, of the different pre uh, presenters and their plans were, as well as any other additional comments or questions you may have uh, within the next 24 hours. I'd like to give the opportunity for any of the students if they wanted to have any closing remarks uh, or, or Kathy as well um, before we close our session. I guess mine would just be to thank you all again for giving us this opportunity to um, give back to the community. It's a key role of what we do in our program here and we want to instill this into our students as they graduate. So this is always great for us to work in collaboration. And Manny, you've been terrific, as have everyone else who's, who's contributed to this, and Haley in particular. She's taken on the burden of reviewing drawings in the, at, at school in addition to her other work. Um, but I, I just, again, I just really appreciate this opportunity. And yeah, students, if you have anything you want to share before we leave, please speak up. I was just going to say thank y'all for giving up y'all's time today to come. We appreciate it. Yeah, thank you all. Thank you. Thank you so much. All right, I'd like to uh, thank everyone once again for attending the Myrtle Lawn uh, Eco Park Community Webinar and stay tuned for things to come. All right. Everyone have thank a great you. day. Have a great day, everyone.